Cool. Well, anyway, thanks for thanks for joining me today. I appreciate that. Yeah. And thanks yeah. for collaborating on Interstellar Brother of Man. Uh, and uh, I, you, did you see the email I sent to you today from yeah. WFMU? And that's really cool. He really loves the song. So, and I'm getting, I mean, it just came out yesterday, right? So we're, um, that, that's good news. At least <laughs> it's getting some love right off the bat, which is really cool. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, I've tried for years to get radio play. Um, and it's like this elusive thing that you're not even sure if it does anything. <laughs> It's like you want it, but you're not sure if it's actually going to do anything for you. So I, I don't know whether to pursue it. Have you pursued radio at all in the past? With um, some... in the in the past, yeah. When I was with Six Degrees, okay. um, they had some, you know, some radio. There's an independent guy. I'll have to, if you're interested, I can look up his name. Yeah. Um, there's this guy that was like an independent promoter, mm-hmm. and he would hit up like all the college stations, mm-hmm. independent stations. You know, he. he yeah wasn't able to hit the major stations but all like community stations and college stations and things like that it could get some play okay. you know uh, but but it's like things are just so different now yeah you know everyone's like focused on Spotify. right yeah but I, but it is but it is good for credibility you know yeah yeah i, I mean I, I love radio personally. Actually, let me back up. I better I introduce you properly because if this goes up, I, maybe I'll back up. We'll start again. And I uh, said, so. okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize we were starting just yet, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this just going to be like a conversation or like an interview? Or is yeah. Well, the, what, the, what, 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 what are you comfortable Are you comfortable with and, that you interview questions? Yeah, that cut bits and parts out. Just, lagging you're lagging a bit here so Oops. but i've got a it's glitching out a bit yeah wi-fi i'll go directly are you directly um well i can go like back with the ethernet yeah uh i am i'm just right outside in front of my studio so i should be good is it okay now hold on that seems better now i'm um yeah I'm right next to my router and let's see hold on it might I think it's me. God. Um do you know what your speed is? No, I don't. Um it's but I, I don't do know. The, we we do I do the, classes online too with the I do music okay. production classes online with uh um, with this, so it shouldn't be a I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Maybe not. Oh that's you t- you teach uh, music lessons yeah. online? Teach music production as well. Um, uh, teach and the uh, copyright Great. and um, music business courses. You know, um, for the Academy of Art University of City. So I do that. I do teach a few courses during the school year, and then we have music production courses here at the studio too for kids uh, from the county. So okay. that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It keeps oh. it keeps the studio really like fresh and alive. All these kids coming in and you know young composers basically. Yeah. They're really like very enthusiastic. Yeah. So it's 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 been great. I really, really enjoy it. It's you know, it's like they're not jaded yet. <laughs> so they're very like they're very like, you know what I mean? They're right. very fresh and, and yeah. really into it. And that's that's really great. So um Yeah, there's there's a little bit of wind noise. Uh, yeah. number one, number two, um, it's still kind of glitching out. I'm gonna try and switch to uh, my Ethernet and okay. see if that helps. Hang on a second. Um, but it might. Is that better? It seems to be. Yeah. That's probably okay. too bright. All right. It might be a little too bright. Uh, the shades. Maybe just change it a little bit. No, no, no. The the blinds. The blinds. Oh, is that too bright? Okay. Yeah, it's a little too bright. Is that better? That's good. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, it seems to be good. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more just to make sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm at 600 megabits per second, so I'm I'm really good. Yeah, I think I'm okay now. I think I was just too far away from the. From yeah, the- and it's better because the wind. You could hear the wind, like you know, <laughs> and then when you talk back, the wind would come. Couldn't really hear it that well. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. This looks. This sounds pretty good now. So. Yeah, it looks good too. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll just back up a little and I'll just say, and I'll, I'll edit the other stuff out or, or have okay. actually do that. So, um, hey guys, um, welcome today. I have a special guest, Mr. David Starfire, uh, a fabulous world-renowned producer, DJ, musician, and now I can call my friend. 
So anyway, David, welcome, and so good to have you. And and uh, first of all, congratulations uh, to both of us, I guess, on having this this for our first song out together, um, which was launched yesterday on all major streaming services called Interstellar, Brother of Man. I love the title. <laughs> And I think it's it, it just, I don't know, I have, have heard so many comments about the title. People are like, that's an interesting title. And uh, I actually couldn't find any other songs called that. So I was like, this is good. We're not going to be mixed up with anybody else, right? So anyway, um, so I think that a lot of a lot of people know me, uh, but I'd like them to get to know you. Uh, so um, could you maybe just tell us about how you got started in the music industry and, and, and how you would how would you describe yourself and your style? Uh, thanks. And it was wonderful to collaborate with you on the song. And it's wonderful. We're already getting some radio play and some great yeah. feedback. So super excited to see, you know, how this journey of this song will, you know, continue. And it's only been a day and things have been really, really awesome. So uh, yeah. WFMU radio will be playing it. And, and the, the guy is actually an old friend of mine. And this is an interesting story. He was my neighbor in Tokyo. Uh, for many years and I didn't know that and it was just I ran into him one day at the convenience store and I was like Mike Rogers this, because he, he was a very famous you know DJ TV personality in Tokyo for a long time and I just ran into him the convenience store one day and we found out we were neighbors so that's and that now we re reconnected with him so that's really cool wow that's a cool story <laughs> it's, it's it's such a small world you know what I mean in the music industry you'll like run into people in different parts of the world and you know it's like oh what are you doing here and you know, it's it's just so awesome and such a blessing, really, to be able to do what we do. Right. Yeah. Something that we really love and, and you know, to thrive and to be able to, you know, make a living at doing it, you know. Exactly. So I just I just really just count my blessings every day, you know, just how lucky we are. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I always, I always tell people it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> it's a lot of work and it's, it's you, and if you treat it like a profession, it becomes a profession, but if you treat it like a hobby, it becomes a hobby for people. So you have to put the hard work into it and stay focused and keep putting that music out and, and you're doing a lot touring too. And so I, I tell us about your shows. I see your amazing posts and these amazing festivals. I'm like, oh my God, this is, I want to go to these festivals. They're so cool. So you're playing, you've got some shows coming up, right? No? Yeah, yeah. Next week I'm performing at Lightning in a Bottle Festival and it's uh, right outside of Bakersfield. So kind of in between San Francisco and Los Angeles. Uh, it's a really, really amazing, beautiful festival. About uh, 25 or 30,000 people, some great headliners like, Diplo and Sophie Tucker oh, okay. and Closey. So it'll be a really, really fun festival. I've played it a few times before, but it's it's been quite some time. Right. And now that, you know, the pandemic's over, yeah. people are going out to festivals again. And it's like just magic. It really is. You know, people where they want to connect with people and they want to hear live music. And yeah. so the festivals I've, I've been playing at the last year, it's been just like, off the hook just people <laughs> having such a great time that is so cool it's so good to see people out playing again and it's just like i'm just seeing constantly festivals and performances again in my news feed and and i'm getting out to start playing again too i've got my first shows in mexico city in in the fall i got two shows in mexico city then i'll be down in colombia and chile and and brazil and some places uh, but I, I play at anime conventions <laughs> So it's a it's a very different crowd from what you're playing for. I've got I've got the whole nerd crowd that come out for shows and and they're all dressed up in Pokemon outfits and you know that yeah they they dress up like in Cowboy Bebop outfits and things like that and it's uh they do a lot of cosplaying and they come out to the shows and and so very different crowd but a very interesting crowd of people. They're very they're they're excited but they're subdued at the same time right they're more like watching you watching everything you do and i think your crowd's the opposite right they're just <laughs> <out there. laughs> yeah they're you know on a, probably a few substances and just like leaving their mind and <laughs> it's having more fun than a human should be allowed yeah but, like, right but, yeah but, uh, but but yeah to each itself you yeah. know I mean, to to a cosplay person you know coming to one of your shows is like you know, for them, it's like the most like wonderful thing ever. 
And same with the festival. It's like people enjoying music, you know, in whatever form, whatever type that is. Yeah. Which is yeah. great. So I'm curious, um, are you playing the music from Cowboy Bebop, like the soundtrack? Is yeah. that or are you mixing it with your music or like what well, I'm just kind of curious what, what it looks like? And do you have like the film, like the visuals of it? Yeah, I do. I have I have a visual show and it's I play um theme songs from Cowboy Bebop. Ghost in the Shell and other you know, other um some uh, anime IP that I've written for in the past and that I'm writing for right now. I'm writing for an IP called A uh, Tower of God, which is pretty popular on Crunchyroll. So I will play um songs, theme songs from from the the shows, and then I'll mix in my own original music with it, and then we'll have animated visuals for all of it. So it's and I play with the four piece band, so I'll be playing guitar and singing, and then you know I'll be triggering some samples and some and playing some interesting soundscapes between the songs and it, it's fun it's a fun experience right and it's a, for a lot of people it's nostalgic they're like oh my god this is like 1999 cowboy bebop and they're like crying they'll be like crying you know things like that it's very it, it actually it's it's in some people get emotional it's really interesting because the the soundtracks are something that they kind of grow up with right and, and yeah they connect to it at a particular time in their lives and they and they, it's embarrassing to come to oh you were the soundtrack when i was like nine years old i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> like a 30 year old man telling me this <laughs> so it's a little embarrassing sometimes you know how far back it's going but yeah. at the same token um it, it sticks with them it sticks you know it's uh, that's what i like about the soundtrack music uh, for anime and, and games it sticks with people for a long time so it has legs you know so that's the good news but um yes yeah, cool. that's, that's awesome do you play like dialogue samples from the movie is that some of the samples that you play within like the the um you know your set it's interesting you say that because i do i put in like you know see a space cowboy <laughs> <laughs> you know it'll, it'll come that's so cool, cool. My friend Steve Bloom is a famous voice actor and, and he's on the side. That's how we know. I know a lot of the voice actors from that, you know, and yeah, we'll have little voices and there'll be little, um, little clips, soundtrack clips, and then we'll play a song and then there'll be like a little clip from, from Ghost in the Shell. And then we'll go into the next song from Ghost in the Shell and then a little visual. So it, it is very uh, audio visual in a way. The show and i think it that people go they, that's what they go they oh my god that, that scene oh that song is from that scene and it'll be a, a cutaway song or something and you know or theme or the ending theme or something like that you know so yeah yeah so, that, that's so cool yeah it's, it's interesting so so tell us about your show you you're you're djing and playing instruments at your show right both yeah. right yeah yeah so i have this kind of like hybrid live show where i'm djing and at the same time while I'm DJing, like after I mix in and out of the songs, I'm playing different instruments. Right. So, you know, sometimes it'd be guitar, bass, drums, right. um, like coming up in Lightning and Bottle, I'll be playing bass guitar and then a live hand drum, um, a live hand sonic, which is an electronic hand drum, and then also a tom, like a rock tom. Okay. So I'm playing those, you know, and it's, uh, you know, visually it's just, you know, for the audience, yeah. You know, they, they seem to be more interested and in seeing like a performer. Me, sometimes I get bored when I'm just DJing. So I <laughs> yeah. like to be playing instruments and doing yeah. something, you yeah. know, just because, yeah. you know, just more interactive with the audience, I believe as well. Just kind of feeling off the audience and, you know, playing different ways. And, you know, some of it's improv. Some of it, you know, are like set parts that I have to play. So it's, it's kind of fun for me. Mm -hmm. I usually have a, for the bigger festivals and shows, I have dancers. Oh, I have wow. probably about um, eight to 10 dancers that are going to be performing. Uh, some are fire dancers, some are belly dancers, some are like break dancers. So I'll have these awesome dancers that come out on either side of the stage, left and right stage. Wow. And yeah, this like theatrical show. Wow. <laughs> that, that sounds great. I mean, I have never been to one of your shows, but I am coming to one of your shows. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sneak away and go like, hmm, well, I'm, I see your, your, your uh, post. I'm like, I'm going to go to the show. The one in Hawaii, I was so tempted to just get on a flight that same day. I saw the post. I was like, oh man, this sounds great. Cause you, you play these, um, you're, you're at these amazing festivals. I mean, every single one of them, I go like, wow. Like I, you were down in Latin America for some festival and it looked amazing on a beach or something somewhere and they all look exotic and super interesting and and um, I mean 
you're definitely living the life. You're doing these great festivals. You're not, you're not playing in bars and slugging it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have. I mean, the thing is that, you know, like you said, you know, it's a lot of hard work. I mean, yeah. this wasn't like overnight, right? I mean, this is like a long time coming. You know, going back to your original question, how I got into all this, you know, when I was eight years old, I started playing guitar, you know. My, I was always getting into trouble and, and uh, my, you know, there was a uh, family counselor that said, you know, he needs a hobby, and I was, <laughs> you know, so like get him, a, you know, a guitar, you know, so I started playing guitar and I just loved it. And then I moved on to like bass, keyboards, right. drums, percussion, and yep. then music production, right? So by the time I was 16, I was pretty proficient in most instruments. And then when I, when I graduated from high school as a graduation gift, I got a four track recorder. Okay, yeah, I, remember those. I, I spent a Fostex. Yeah, that's what I had too, a Fostex, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Portal <laughs> One, I think, is what it was. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So, and it was just really cool, a lot of fun. And um, I spent, like, the next summer, like, recreating albums, you know? So I recreated, like, Rush's Moving Pictures oh, album. Where I played all the instruments and no, all right. the parts. I and, love that uh, album. It's my favorite yeah. album ever, yeah. I mean, it was it was just like so awesome. I mean, you know, it wasn't spot on, but it was pretty good because those guys, they have like serious chops, you know, so it, yeah. it could never probably ever be completely like recreated verbatim. But, you know, I tried my best. And um, so the unfortunate thing is by the end of that summer, I played so much. My hands, yeah. unfortunately, got tendonitis oh, no. because of overuse syndrome. Right. And at the time it was like oh my god this is like you know the end you know of my musical career you know and um the therapist is like you have to just kind of chill out and you know you have to really like you know warm up and all these things and then i started getting more into electronic music you know because i was just more, more into like rock music and things like that so i started getting into like electronic sampling programming and so that's when i started like okay i can sequence parts i can play the part once and i could record it and then just chop it up. And so that's when I started getting into electric, electronic music. And so I started using a hybrid of like electronic and rock, and then I got into like industrial rock music. And, uh, you know, I, I had this like beautiful career of like, you know, I'd be in a band, we'd get signed, we'd like go on tour, and then that would be great. And then like, that band would break up and then I would get in another band and we get signed and we'd be on tour and you know this kind of thing that happened you know a few times and it was amazing every time I went on tour with like Nine Inch Nails and Skinny Puppy and Ministry and you know uh, Love and Rockets and you know so I've, I've had some you know really awesome shows you know performing for you know really really great bands and um, then you know got to a point to where I was just kind of done with bands you know I just want to do a solo thing. And then at the same time, you know, being like a solo DJ became a thing, you know, like Paul Oakenfold, you know, he was like, you know, the first kind of like DJ, you know, artist and uh, was doing it. And after that, you know, it was like, you can, you know, be a one man band and perform and DJ. Yeah. And so then I was like, well, you know, I'm just going to do that, you know? And so then I, I, you know, started, um, focusing on like working on music and I'm like you know well what is my sound gonna be what I'm gonna you know, what am I gonna do and I was living in San Francisco at the time and my roommate he worked at Amoeba Records okay. and he worked in the world music department and he would come home with like at the time with CDs yeah. of different world music you know from all these amazing artists you know from from around the world Nuswat Fata Ali Khan I love and, you know, others you know just beautiful um Sheila Chandra Right. And um, I would take their samples and like put dance music behind it. And um, I would, you know, give it to my DJ friends and I DJ out and people like really, really loved it, you know? So I just kept kind of doing that and kind of got a name for myself rather quickly in San Francisco. And then I started meeting these different instrumentalists and musicians that um, played music from uh, South Asia mm -hmm. and Southeast Asia specifically and would connect with them when we record and I started making original songs right. and, and um, playing those out as well had lots of feedback and then I went and I sent the music to Six Degrees Records and it got signed and that was kind of like the real launch you know of, of the David Starfire um, experience and career and um, here I am. That's an amazing story man and you know I, I was such a huge fan of Six Degrees 
I remember the first time I discovered Six Degrees and your music and, and um, Chevy Shaba, right? And all these other people, I was like, oh my God, I found my, my label. This is the music that I love because I love like that world music, Spangle. I remember listening to Spangle when they first started. And I was like, it just blew me away. I was like, whoa, like I, I, there was this electronic music scene in Tokyo, but it was kind of harsh. It was like mid techno, harsh techno, which was cool. But the world music so appealed to me so much. It was just this beautiful melodic approach to everything with all these beautiful exotic sounds that just, I was always like, oh my God, what is that instrument? What's going on? This is so amazing. And I remember that that whole era when that took off and 60s took off and I was just a huge fan. I remember flying to San Francisco to go to a six degrees party. I came here just to go to the party. I got off the plane. I went straight. It was, it was, some, I can't remember, it was in the warehouse in San Francisco. I was like, I want to go to this party and, 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 uh, and see what was going on. Chevy Shabal was playing at this party years ago. And um, yeah, great, great music. And they're still around. They're still around, still yeah. doing things, right? So, I, I might have been at that party. You might have been. You might have been. Yeah. I, I, anytime Six Degrees had an event, you know, I was there either performing or, you know, supporting. Chevy was a very close, dear friend of mine. Uh, rest in peace just yeah. he was just an amazing person and artist all around uh yeah i mean yeah there's so much great music that came out of six degrees and so many um artists there but there, a lot of them are doing their own thing now you guys are all independent right and doing doing your own thing these days which i see a lot of you know everyone's kind of finds find, finds their niche and, and we can kind of function with or without the label right you can kind of go either way um i've always you know liked having that support system around me that this, this, somebody knows something that I don't but I do my own releases and it's funny you brought up Rush because I just did a cover of Tom Sawyer no way I did a cover oh. with, with tabla with the Indian tabla right and and keyboards instead of the guitar solo I've got a keyboard solo going on I'll, I'll send you a copy of it I'm going to release it but I was I was interesting you said I was like yeah wow we're, that's a that's an interesting coincidence right because I was like after this album is kind of runs its course i'm going to release you know tom sawyer or somewhere maybe i don't know i'm i'm still thinking about what to do with it uh it, it's like one of those songs where i'm trying to find the right moment to put it out right or it makes sense maybe there's a rush reunion tour i don't know or something they find how could they replace neil pert though there's just no i mean <laughs> i don't know who could replace that guy just be incredible right so yeah. but yeah yeah that's a that's an interesting coincidence so I wanted to um, talk to uh, talk to you about your style and how would you describe your musical style? Because I I've been trying to explain your style to people, but it's really hard to explain it. Um, but how would you how would you describe what you do? So um, I call it global bass. It's okay. it's a genre that I've coined and is is you know I'm kind of looked at as like the pioneer of global bass. And so it's like you know bass music like you know heavy bass music like subs and electronic music mixed with um, music from around the world. And so, um, you know, it's right now, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's still a niche genre. It's not yeah. like techno or dubstep. Yeah. It's still a niche genre, but yeah. there are lots of artists, you know, in that space that are creating really awesome music. Okay. And uh, you know, it's, it's it's something that's like dear to me. You know, I do write songs and will perform songs and, um, you know, collaborate with people outside of that, like you and right. I have a recent single called You, um, called you that yeah. uh, just came out recently with an artist, this vocalist named Oriole Poole, and right. it's more of a future based kind of pop song. So, okay. um, you know, it will kind of expand out of that genre, but global bass is like kind of what I've known for and kind of what I created. And now there's like, you know, this uh, amazing, you know, like swath of musicians that are, are creating in that genre. That is very cool. It's very cool to be a pioneer of something new. Um, I mean, global bass, I, I mean, could you give me some other examples of other global bass musicians we should be checking out? Who else would yeah. Like out there? Yeah, um, I would say Closey is probably one of the biggest ones. Right, I saw that on the on the festival you're playing, right? I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's and yeah, her and I are friends. We played uh, shows together, toured together. We've also um, had the same manager. She's from France. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's now living in Denver. We had the same manager and agent a few years back, 
And so, you know, we had some collaborations and some remixes and things like that. And she's, you know, blown up. She's she's amazing. Her style is a little kind of more on the poppier side now or, or more mainstream side. But, you know, she uses um, a lot of like instruments from around the world, like a lot of Japanese instruments mm -hmm. and Asia vocals from Bulgaria, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so she's like you know one of the the bigger artists of that genre a good friend of mine suhan which you and i have talked about he's more of like a mashup artist so he'll like take samples from around the world you know he'll have like a you know a vocal you know from the middle east mixed with like a didgeridoo from australia mixed with wow. um you know drums from africa mixed with a sitar from india you know and blended all in one song you know, and he'll have like all these different artists, you know, like name, and then he'll throw like, you know, some pop, you know, you know, like vocals in there, you know, like either rap or like, you know, uh, or samples from a movie. So it's like kind of like a mashup of like the world, you know? So um, he's another art artist. So he's doing something kind of a little different. His is more like a mashup of like samples, but it's really, really cool what he does. So those two artists are, you know, they're friends of mine and, and they're doing some really great stuff, but very different as well. That is so cool. It's, it's such an eclectic blend when I hear all these uh, different artists, electronic music. The, the cool thing about electronic music is you can just do anything really it's so it's so amazing and i mean that's very different from what we've kind of we, we did together with the interstellar brother of man which is really pop reggae electronic i don't know how would you describe it electronic reggae pop something like that i don't uh, yeah it's that, kind of, that sounds about right yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting thing i love collaborating with people because just anything like getting beats from you or getting some uh, something like a starting point to me is makes it makes it uh, like a, a more interesting journey taking what people you know start with and, and trying to build on it and and create something unique and interesting and i and i, I love what uh, what what turned out from our collaboration i'd love to do more with you in the future it's funny i was listening to that natu natu song have you heard that natu natu song and i was thinking wow what would it sound like to do natu natu with david starfire <laughs> that would be an interesting thing right because that's actually my first language is telugu is that language really so and it's very unusual for a telugu song to be that big because it's not a it's not like hindi which is very mainstream india right or, or something like that it's it's one region that does telugu and i thought wow this is cool i have an electronic thumping you know electronic version of that song might be a might be an interesting interesting idea you know it would capture a younger indian audience i i saw a guy named Sid Sriram the other day and I don't know if you heard have you heard of Sid Sriram before mm -hmm. he mixes R&B and Carnatic music together like western R&B and Carnatic yeah and, he, and so it's he's a classically trained Carnatic singer and I was like well, this is crazy this is cool he's putting a little bit of um um R&B kind of you know English singing and then mixes it together with the Carnatic music which is a very <laughs> completely unique yeah. and, and he's working with A.R. Rahman and you know but he's from the bay area originally right? oh wow yeah so it's it's cool. this yeah sorry no i was just saying that's 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 great that he's you know in the bay area and, and blown up yeah i i think it's um i think the the diversity and eclectic sort of music these days has a, has a home now i remember growing up where it just didn't have a home and then that's why six degrees is so appealing to me i was like oh this is cool this is you know fresh and new and and I think that uh, what you're doing is great, man. It's awesome. And keeping that spirit alive of diversity and eclectic music going on there. So I don't want to take too much of your time today, um, but I um, want to uh, just wrap up with um, Interstellar Brother Man out on all these streaming services. The music video will be coming out um, in uh, June, in the beginning of June. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting. And uh, hopefully we'll hear it on more radio stations than WFMU and some some cool playlists out there. And I uh, want to thank you for taking the time today to talk to me about this. And uh, I will get out to one of your shows eventually. And we'll actually meet in person. We'll, yes. We'll have, we'll have an actual hug and we'll meet in person one of these days. <laughs> We've been virtual friends for a while now. So this is really cool. we got to get together at some point. So um, yeah, send me your, your, your upcoming dates and stuff like that. I'll repost and share with everybody. And thanks again for joining me today, David. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was great to collaborate with you. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, man. Have a good day. We'll talk soon. Okay. Take care.
Bye -bye. Okay. Bye. Hey, Raj. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you about a um, little bit of pro promo stuff in the video. So the video, I remember I was just like sending you a sketch or something like that, but um, I couldn't find the sketches. Um, are you, were you able to like use something for me in the video? Or I mean, it doesn't matter either way, but I just kind of- I, 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 if, you, if you have something you can give me, cause I, they're, they're, they're about, I would say they're three quarters of the way through it, but it's like, it's like, they're really like, it's like pulling teeth with them. <laughs> It's like, you know, they, I say something and then they just kind of don't get it. You know, they kind of go off in this, if there's, they, they don't communicate very well. And then I tell them to I ask them to do something and they don't do it. So I think if we gave them something, they would be able to insert it, but I don't see them being able to come up with anything. It's they, they're doing a decent job, but uh, the video guy I had before who recommended them, he was actually much better. <laughs> I liked his style better. So, but they're all, they're fine. So if you have an image or something I can use, that might be easier than trying to get them to come up with, you know, a, an original idea. So if you can send the sketch, I'll try to get that inserted because they're still working on it. There's, I think there's time. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a sketch, but like maybe like a photo. I get this kind of cool photo of me. I mean... Okay. Okay. Kind of would work, but it's kind of give an idea. I've got this like this. I just did this photo shoot. It was this like photo of me like wearing a hat, but it's like kind of like this. It's yeah, kind yeah. of a photo. Maybe they can like you know give them a character to kind of work off of. Right. You know, yes. might be kind of cool. Um, so there's that. This other one I had, it was like it, that. I think about it, it's just you know a little maybe too over. I mean, very superhero esque. Yeah. That I'm not sure would have would have worked or not, but then this other character kind of looking thing that might be a little better. Okay. So, um, but I can I can send that to you and see what you think. Send it to me and let me see if I can get them to put it like somewhere, like on a TV screen or something. You know, some yeah. it, it appears somewhere in it. That would be really cool. And yeah. Uh, if so, if not, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I I you know couldn't find that image, but okay. there's this other thing that I'll send you. Okay. Yeah. And and you know any promo ideas? Let me know. Um, I'll introduce. I'll do an email. I'll introduce you to the label, and okay. my team. And then, and if you have any promo ideas or any suggestions for them, that would be great. Um, I think they're gonna really they're gonna start running ads and stuff like that. Um, pretty soon. So yeah. and then of course they're Spotify editorials and they're doing the whole promo thing. And let's see. But of course, I mean everything helps. <laughs> you know every little thing. You never know, right? So. Okay. But, yeah, so there, so it's through, so it's Strawberry Hill Records, right? No, it's Hopeful Tragedy Records in Montreal. Oh, hopeful, tra okay, hopeful Tragedy Records, and that's in Canada through Sony Canada. Yeah, Sony Fontana North, yeah. Right, okay. So do you, are, but you don't have distribution in the U.S., or do they distribute in the U.S. as well? It's a global, it's a global distribution. Yeah, okay. it's everywhere. It's everywhere. That's that's not a problem. Um, I think that they they got traction on the last album, you know, and they yeah, like yeah. I said, it did pretty good, you know. They and, uh, yeah, yeah, and they. Uh, they I'm sorry, my son's calling me. Um, <laughs> I gotta go. I'm the soccer dad today. I gotta go pick him up. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, gotta, I actually gotta get going. But uh, let's. Uh, can we can we chat again about this once I'll get some information from them and um, I will. I will, I'll get you um, sorted out, get more, like I'll send you an email with, with all the information on it. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, like any ideas you could generate would be fantastic. I'd really appreciate it. And, and okay. Uh, I'll be, okay, he's gonna, he's gonna <laughs> stop. Okay. Okay, I'll talk to you, have a great day, okay? Take care, bye.